darkness was sent in on Twitter using the hashtag corny drive through from Ethan Smith. Can Jim please tell the story of Lance and Lawler trying to steal Memphis from Jarrett? <laughs> Jim's hinted many times, but I've never heard the full story. Well, I don't know if you can almost, especially with Lance involved, I don't know if you can phrase anything as uh, trying to steal it. They were going to open their own company. Um, there are, I mean, obviously, from everybody's viewpoint, there was differences. But the basic bone of contention was that when Jerry Jarrett had split off from Nick Goulas and kept Memphis, uh, they took Memphis away from, from Nick, but kept it in terms of he had been the booker for the past almost 10 years, and he had thought that he had bought into the entire company and found out that Nick had flummoxed him on some paperwork. So Jarrett splits off from Nick, and he takes Lawler as his top star <clears throat> because with if you've got Lawler, then you got Memphis. And he also took Lance and Dave because then you've got the other station's program director and the most popular news personality in the market. They all went, so that was a bloodless coup, and because Jarrett's – Jared had opened the cities, the rest of the cities in his new Memphis territory, Louisville and Evansville and Lexington and up this way. As a promoter, he already had those towns. Nick just went back to Nashville, Birmingham, Chattanooga. But anyway, Jared had split off. He got Memphis because Lawler went with him and Lance went with him. And he had told Lawler at the time that when he, if, if they were successful and profitable, that he would cut Lawler in for a piece of the company or be partners or whatever the, the offer was. Lawler already, his payoffs for Memphis were 10% of the gate. So if they did 20 grand, he'd make two grand, you know, 40 fucking years ago. <clears throat> anyway, by 1983, that Lawler is still the top guy. He's still making he's a lot of money wrestling, but he's not an owner. And I think what really got him started percolating on the issue was when Jared built his house in Hendersonville, which was 18,000 square feet with a built-in ballroom of uh, the most incredible custom-built mansion that you've ever seen with these huge 15-foot double front doors and a pool out back and an office wing and a bedroom wing. And did I mention the ballroom? <clears throat> Set on top of 100 acres in Hendersonville, out where all the uh, country music stars lived. And I think Lawler started, well, wait a minute. What about me? You left me out. And so by early 1983, Jerry had set about discussing with people whether they would come in and wrestle for him if he opened his own company in Memphis. And he talked to Lance. And Lance knew that in, if you're going to uh, run wrestling in Memphis, you had to have Lawler. And so he was on Jerry's side in this. And the end result was that Lawler and Lance didn't break off and start their own company, which would have killed Jarrett in Memphis. At the same time, it would have screwed up Louisville and Evansville and Lexington because the TV show that aired there was shot in Memphis at channel five. If Lance and Lawler had gone to another station and started a program, to be quite honest, Lawler was not the greatest businessman in the world, and I don't know what control Lance would have had or would have wanted, but Lawler was not big on preparation and paperwork, so that may, may or may not have worked as well as the existing promotion already was. So they worked it out with Lawler and Jarrett becoming partners and Lance sticking aboard, and that was probably the best thing for everybody. When people talk about Memphis, the average you know Memphis fan, they'll talk about Lawler and Jarrett rotating as bookers. How much credit does Bill Dundee and, to an extent, Dutch Mantel deserve for their times helping out with the book? Well, uh, actually, it, it's a misnomer that Lawler and Jarrett just bumped it back and forth amongst them, each other. Um, going back to, let's say, uh, I don't know that Lawler booked before... 70s i think he was he was he was booking his stuff by 77 but jarrett was pretty much the booker uh most of the time 72 73 74 that period 
where Lawler really got over because he gave him that push and they, the business was huge at that point. And then Jared got distracted in 75 somewhat with booking in Atlanta, but still obviously was, had a hand in everything. And then I think it was not till probably 76, 77 that he even had Lawler doing a lot of his own program still with his input. And by then there Lawler was, had kind of learned what Jarrett liked as far as how to book that territory and that flavor. And then there was, uh, uh, I think maybe 78 is when Lawler, first time Lawler had it. And then when they let it out of the family and Robert Fuller had that little run in 79, they didn't do that anymore for a while. It went back to Jarrett. Then I believe it either went back to Lawler. It may have gone to Dundee for the first time. But then when Lawler uh, broke his leg, pretty much that year, Jarrett obviously always had a hand on everything, but Dundee, I believe, booked. And then maybe Lawler had it been when he came back from the leg, but then Dundee was always in the mix there from 79 on and had a lot of input. And he was a, he was the opposite of Jerry in that he was a workaholic. He was always at the office earlier. He was always working in the car on paperwork, or he was always thinking about stuff. And he liked to keep small cards, but everybody involved. And, uh, you know, it just, it was a different way of looking at things, but he was still booking Memphis wrestling and the style that, that Jerry had established and that, that the people bought and liked. But Dundee was, Lawler was great at doing gross business, but you'd have a lot of guys on a card and Lawler was incredible at doing his own shit. But Dundee had better attention to detail and was better prepared probably and enjoyed doing the actual job more and spread everything out a little bit across the card, but kept them smaller. And he did a tremendous job too. And then Jarrett would actually just jump back in if either one of those other two guys lost the plot, as they say, and business started going down. 